Hi, this is Michael Kennedy from Developmentor, and I want to give you a quick introduction to routing in ASP.NET MVC. MVC is about embracing the web. In the web, we work in HTML, we work in CSS, we work directly in these things. We don't have abstractions over top of them. The same thing goes for the URL. The URL is a key part of the internet and web applications, and ASP.NET makes that a key pillar of the platform. So let's take a quick look at some of the things routing does for us in MVC. The most obvious thing is given a URL, it lets us choose a controller and an action within that controller to run when you make a request that URL. That's pretty straightforward. It also lets you pass data. So the default route in MVC passes an ID to every single action. We'll see how we can work with that as well as add uh, our own. It also lets you constrain data. So for example, you could say things like the ID must always be a six digit alphanumeric number or value and things like that. Also, in uh, typical web applications these days, users see the address bar as basically the new command line. So we can make our command line easier to use or harder to use, more user-friendly, less user-friendly. So understanding routing in MVC allows us to construct easy-to-use, intuitive uh, addresses and URLs within our web application. So the easiest way to see this is just to create an example and work with it. So let's switch over to Visual Studio here. Uh, create a basic uh, MVC web application, and let's just create a uh, one called an internet application. So here we are in the home controller. We have a couple of actions already created for us. We have an index and about action. We also may have a contact. Yep, there's the contact. So we have these three here. Now if we run our app, you'll see that we'll just come up here with a, a home page, which actually is the index action. Now you don't see that in the URL right now. There's no home, there's no index, but we could just as well type home slash index and get the same thing. We'll see how that works in routing. We could also go to home slash about, and that takes us to the about page. We could also click here and go to home slash contact. So you can see there's this relationship between the controller and the actions. That's the default way the routes work. That's not the way they have to work. So we can also pass data in here, like we could pass 72 to the contact action. It doesn't take that, it doesn't do anything with it, but we could. Now, let's go over here and create another action just a basic one down here. And we'll just call it a uh, test. Okay. And let's take a, a value called ID. And let's just say, um, say you bag that uh, ID equals ID. Okay, so we're just gonna pass this long. We probably would do something nicer for real, but just for example, we just wanna show this. Off. So let's go and right click add a view. Let's just go down here. Say uh, ID is at viewbag.id. Uh, VR, do like that. So let's go to test, the home slash test. You'll see it should pull up our test page, but there's no value for ID. We could pass in that 72 now, and that's flowing through. So how does this happen? What, what's going on here? You can see definitely the value 72 here is flowing through. So let's go look at how routes are defined in MVC websites and uh, how this value gets passed in. So somehow the URL value of 72 is being passed in for this and then the rest of it's just standard MVC stuff. So if you go look in the newer MVC projects in MVC4 under this app start folder under route config, that's where all the routing happens. Traditionally in the older versions it happened in the global ASAX. But let's go here. And you can see we have what's called a default route. And the default route always looks like this. Controller, action, ID. So home, test, 72. And the value of 72 is passed in here. Now you see something down here that's probably fairly confusing the first time you see it. Let me wrap it around so it's a little more visible. So MVC uses these anonymous types a lot to define uh, defaults or dictionaries or things like that. So in this case, saying if the controller is not specified, use home. If you say home, but there's no action specified, use index. That's why we're able to just go to the home page, just the, the root of the website and get to home index. And the ID value is actually optional. Now we could go and actually customize this 
to do more things. But let's just start with this. Suppose we wanted to pass additional data in here. Um, one way that older websites typically do this is maybe we want to pass a value like this. Go over here to the test and maybe we also want to say um, user ID is four and category is um, books, something like that. All right, so we could do this sort of query string type of thing. And it turns out that MVC uses what's called model binding to fill this out. So I could actually say something like this. I could say, um, say int user ID comma string category category. And let's just pass these off. So we'll say view bag dot uh, user ID equals user ID and view bag dot category equals category. Okay, so let's just go to our view and echo these back out like we did before. So we got our category, it's going to be vbag.category, and our user ID is going to be user ID, like so. Alright, so if we just recompile this and refresh our page, give it a moment, you can see that books is being passed in, the user ID of 4 is passed in. Of course, if I change this to 42, now the user ID is 42. I could call this uh, cars, and that would come up with cars down below. Of course, if I leave this out, category will be empty. However, we do have this problem of if I leave this one out, we end up with an error because we were using an integer here. And if no value is specified, we can't have like a null integer. So we have a couple of options. We could say uh, it's a nullable ID, which would be fine. That would totally work. The other option is to leverage C sharp four and do this. Um, say equals minus one, or, right? Equals minus one. Okay. So now, if we don't pass a value, you'll see that minus one will come up down here as soon as everything refreshes. Minus one. But of course, if we say question mark user ID equals ten. Then ten works. Okay, great. But these um, URL query strings are not so nice. What if we could do something like uh, construct a URL that was like uh, this? Maybe it was slash home slash uh, test slash cars slash seventy two to instead of having the cars out here. How would we move that bit from the query string over to here? Well, the answer is routing. So what we have to do is go over here to our route definition and define a custom route. And the more specific ones always go at the beginning. So let's say we have controller, action, and then we have slash category, then we have slash ID, okay? Now in this case, having this as optional is not acceptable because it will, um, there's no real way to distinguish between these, you know, this one and this one if that's optional. So if we go over here like this, just recompile that, and I just uh, go over here, let's forget the user bit for a minute, and we say home slash test, uh, so home slash test is the action, cars is the category, seven, 72 is the ID. There you go. You can see cars, if you want to change this to books, books goes in there and so on. We're still not passing the user ID. We could do it like this. Um, user ID equals seven. Now user ID is seven. So maybe some combination is what we're looking for here. That gives you a, a quick idea of routing. We saw that there's a default route that that's always slash home um, controller slash action slash ID. And the default one is always to use home and index. So if we say just slash, like we did here, or we say slash home, or we say slash home slash index, those are all the same things. But then home about, well, that's something different. And we also saw that home slash test would work because it matches the lower route, but doesn't pass the category or ID. And finally, we saw that we can also create custom routes where as part of the URL we pass additional data. So maybe we want to have computers as the category and 42 as the ID. So we can pass those like this using routing. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a quick introduction and overview of MVC routing that makes sense. 
you can see uh, you have to have the more specific ones uh, in front of the more general ones. Basically, NBC goes down this list in order and stops at the first one that might match. So that's why we had to put this one first, right? Give it a unique name, give it some sort of structure and some defaults here. Off you go. All right, hopefully that's helpful. Take care.